Lil Durk, aka Dirk Banks, is presently in the custody of the US government and has been charged with conspiracy to use interstate facilities to commit murder for hire resulting in death. Hey, I'm America's attorney, I'm your favorite or maybe like second favorite, definitely not third favorite lawyer on YouTube. And I've helped over 20,000 clients over the past 23 years of being a lawyer. So you already know, I'm here to break this situation down. By the end of this video, you're gonna understand what fascinating piece of evidence was in the arrest affidavit, but will probably never be shared with the jury. But boy, it, sh it sure does make him seem guilty. Late last week, Lil Durk was arrested by Lil US Marshals in connection with a murder attempt on an individual only named as TB in the criminal complaint. This attempt ended up taking TB's family member's life instead. The indictment and others like it accused the rap collective Only the Family or OTF of being behind the murder in the murder attempt. The indictment alleges, in addition to OTF's status as a rap collective, I, the FBI special agent behind the affidavit, know based on the investigation that OTF also acts as an association in fact of individuals who engage in violence, including murder and assault at the direction of banks and to maintain their status in OTF. Earlier this month, five people were charged with crimes because of the murder and their indictment is where we first see Dirk referenced as a conspirator. Now the indictment specifically charges Dirk with a violation of 18 USC section 1958A, conspiracy to use interstate facilities to commit murder for hire resulting in death. Before I break down the specifics of that law, let's get into what the indictment actually accuses Lil Dirk of doing. Evidence shows that Banks ordered TB's murder and that the hitmen used Banks and OTF related finances to carry out the murder. For example, bank and flight records show that an OTF member and close associate of Banks, co-conspirator three, coordinated and paid for Jones, Lindsay, Wilson, Houston, and another OTF member, that's co-conspirator two, to travel from Chicago to California on the day before the murder, August 18, 2022. Co-conspirator three paid for the flights using a credit card linked to Banks and OTF. Around the time that co-conspirator three purchased the co-conspirator's flights to California, I cloud records show that a phone number associated with banks texted co-conspirator three don't book no flights that are no names involved with me additionally on the same day that the hitman traveled to california from chicago banks also traveled to california with another charged co-conspirator grant on a private jet later that day grant purchased ski masks for the shooters to use to commit the murder and paid for other co-conspirators hotel room using a credit card in banks's name okay so Lil Dirk flies private, but the hitmen have to travel on Spirit Airlines? Okay, whatever. The federal law that Dirks has been charged with violating is 18 U.S.C. 1958A. Here's what the law says. Whoever travels in or causes another, including the intended victim, to travel in interstate or foreign commerce, or uses or causes another, including the intended victim, to use the mail or any facility of interstate or foreign commerce with the intent that a murder be committed in violation of the law of any state or the United States, as consideration for the receipt of, or as consideration for a promise or agreement to pay, anything of pecuniary value, or who conspires to do so, shall be fined under this title or in prison for not more than 10 years or both, and if personal injury results, shall be fined under this title or in prison for not more than 20 years or both, and if death results, shall be punished by death or by life imprisonment, or shall be fined not more than $250,000 or both, okay? That's fairly straightforward. Since planes travel in interstate commerce and since credit card transactions move in interstate commerce, you can see how the feds intend to tie this inherently state law violation, because murder is always a violation of state law, to the interstate commerce system that connects the states to each other. The application of this law to Lil Durk would not require that he pull the trigger or even that he be present for the murder. Really, he doesn't have to do much to be involved as long as he's connected to the interstate travel or interstate commerce of the project. Now, Banks is not without some defenses because there are some layers of removal between him and the gunman or gunmen. He has some standard arguments that he can make. Typical arguments for a case like this would be to challenge the evidence and potentially dispute the use of interstate commerce and then affirmatively assert an alibi or lack of involvement. Now, the lack of involvement defense has to be where his lawyers immediately want to go in this particular instance because there's no proof that he was the user of the credit cards in question. Then there is the opportunity for him to say that he was in fact not involved. Just look back at that affidavit. It says the card was associated with him. It doesn't say that he used it. What should be concerning to Dirk and his lawyers 
is that law enforcement clearly believes that they have flipped a witness or two who is providing testimony that Banks is the one who ordered the hit. Of course, merely saying that you wish someone would kill another person is not necessarily a crime, and it's certainly not always a violation of 18 U.S.C. 1958. Banks will have to aggressively dispute the reliability of the flipped witness or witnesses. As you likely know, the standard method for that is to point out the favorable terms of prosecution or even non-prosecution that the flipped witness is enjoying because of his willingness to testify <laughs> against the co-conspirators. So Dirk can argue that he didn't mean it when he said kill TB or that he didn't say it or that it was someone else with access to that credit card that facilitated the travel for the killing. Or he can argue that it wasn't his guys that did the killing. Mm, ooh, mm. Too much video, don't argue that. Next up for Lil Dirk is a plea and arraignment. Now expecting not guilty plea, and the court has already decided that he does not get out on bond. Let me break this down for you. He's never getting his bail set. He will be a pretrial detainee, and here's why. When the allegations are that you were pulling the strings to get someone killed, the court will be concerned that if you are out on bond, that you will pull on those same levers to take care of uh, witnesses before the trial. But of course, people who are in jail have ordered the murder of witnesses from inside a jail as well, so it may not be a perfect fit. But the prosecutors will also say that Dirk is a terrible flight risk because of his wealth and his connections. When this video started, I told you that there was an incredibly fascinating fact, which the jury in the murder for hire case will never find out about. But the judge who's setting his bail conditions certainly found out about it. And here's what it is. When Dirk was about to be arrested, he possessed two commercial airline tickets for separate countries and had also scheduled a private jet to a third country. In other words, he was trying to flee the United States in the most effective way that he knew how. And he had a backup plan and a backup to the backup. In fact, according to the warrant, they apprehended him only hours before he left the country. I mean, this makes him look so guilty, or does it? Because here's an alternative argument. He wasn't fleeing because he was guilty. He was fleeing because he didn't want to be arrested. And I totally get that. I don't want to be arrested. You don't want to be arrested. Look, if Lil Dirk gets word that he's going to be arrested, even if he wasn't involved in that crime, it might make sense to flee if you're thinking like him because you know that you're going to be arrested. You might never have another day of freedom in your life. And while trying to flee the country with multiple international air travel plans, being booked already certainly makes you look guilty. This is the type of evidence that judges typically don't let juries hear about. Because while it can make you look guilty, it doesn't mean that you are. So we can definitely expect a motion in limine from Lil Dirk's Lil Legal team arguing to keep that evidence from the jury. Not wanting to be arrested is not the same thing as ordering a hit. The latest update on Lil Dirk's arrest is that his bail was in fact denied. So he sits in the Broward County Correctional Facility. What are your thoughts on his arrest? Do you believe he is responsible for this murder attempt? Do you see any way that he wasn't involved? Do me a favor, drop your pro se opinion down below in the comments. And while you're down there, don't forget to lawyer up. Hit the subscribe button so you get more of America's Attorney's Breakdown on Little Dirk's arrest and P. Diddy's ongoing case and so many other more fun and exciting topics. I will see you soon. The alignment in debt. Alightment. Tickle. Tickleable. Effective way that he knew how.